Hi, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Herman Ash. Um, I'm doing some holistic comedy today um, at Utopia Clinic um, in Old Smart, Florida. So um, we're going to poke fun at our new lifestyle. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, <coughs> first thing we want to do, guys, um, is everybody in here that's a patient, are you all uh, journaling? Yes. yes. Yeah? Yes. Everybody? Yes. Um, if you're not, um, I really urge you to do that because it's such a big part of uh, what we do here. Um, a lot of people have a hard time opening up, but once you start journaling, it gets a lot better. In fact, um, it's probably, I can honestly say, going through the program, that journaling probably was at least 25% of what helped me heal because it took a lot of pressure off me. Um, a lot of it I didn't even know I had, you know, until we got talking with Jake, the psychologist, and um, I didn't see it, but he picked up on it and said, you need to write about that. And I thought, what is that going to do? What is that going to do for me? And he said, well, you'll really be surprised. Can you hear me? And I told him, yeah, if you tell me to do it, I'll do it. And I did it, and my first one was um, O to the X. My ex-wife. Yeah, that was one thing that was really bugging me. And so um, I didn't realize it at the time. And uh, so I, uh, I went ahead and journaled about it. And he was real impressed with it. And he said, do you feel better? And I told him, you know, I actually do. And I said, well, I didn't realize how I really felt because I always was trying to bury that. And then once I got it out, oh, it was so easy, you know, to deal with it, deal with her. Um, she's really a really nice lady. I, I make a lot of jokes about her, and she you know, is so cool and in, in with it. You know, she's good with it. Like one joke I did, um, I had a lot of uh, skin cancers. And I was doing uh, the improv in um, Tampa, and I had bandages on me all over. And I didn't want everybody to know that I had these small surgeries. So I go in there, and because I'm a cowboy, I was making fun about bob wire, you know, and like I got cut up with bob wire. And I told everybody, I said, uh, you know, they really should call that stuff ex-wife wire. <laughs> you got an X, that's funny. You know, if you don't, you'll get it sooner or later. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, she was good with all those jokes, and she she worked through it with me. And um, in fact, nowadays uh, we're really, really close friends. So because it's no longer about the kids or the money or any of that, and and we had so many good times. Now um, she's actually part of my support group. How cool! You know, um, I'm going to give you a little history on me, and then um, I promise to keep this within 30 minutes. So uh, we're going to move along pretty quick. Um, but my history is I had stage 4 cancer in the roof of my mouth. I had cancer on my larynx. Um, about a quarter of my larynx had, had cancer. And then I had a cancer above my right eye. Um, I was... Uh, I was at the VA when I got my, um, when they told me what I had. Uh, I, de I declined uh, the regular treatment. Um, in fact, I actually gave up and thought my days were done and kind of went along with that, that thing. Uh, but uh, somebody introduced me to holistic healing and within uh, four months, <coughs> I was on the road to recovery. So uh, I'm really glad, and now I passed my two years uh, about 20 days ago. Yeah, so, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, what I want you guys to do, um, you got to take everything here with a grain of salt. Uh, it's totally opposite of a lot of things that you've learned over your life. So. Um, and some of it we can poke a little fun at, and some of it's real serious, you know. And so please take the journaling serious, because the doc was real strong about um, having people open up and uh, kind of bare their soul a little bit so that we can get the healing process started. And if he believes in it, I believe in it. 
And since I did it and knows it, I know it works. So that's why I recommended it to all of you. Um, we're going to get on to the fun stuff. Uh, green drinks. Um, there's a difference between green drinks and juices. Uh, juices, when you make them, it's just the juice. But green drinks are usually done in a blender and um, they're thicker and you got to add something to them like orange juice or uh, almond milk and those are what I use. Uh, and um, when I first came here, you know, I was a, a donut kind of guy. <laughs> you know, I, I never drank a green drink in my whole life. So here I am making them and bringing them and I'm drinking them and all the nurses were going, ain't that good? And I'd look at them like, no, it tastes like dirt, you know. And I know what dirt tastes like. <laughs> you know? And then they go, sorry, Herman, it does taste like dirt. You know? <laughs> I was like, how many of these do I got to eat? And they just wouldn't even answer. They just walk away, you know. And I'm like, oh, no. I got to eat these for the rest of my life. <laughs> but, but you figure out ways to make them better. You, you know, I like to put a little orange in mine, a little apple. You know, we got to watch our sugar. And you definitely want to check with Belinda on anything that you're going to eat. Because some of you have different diets than others. And, and uh, they'll work with you on any way they can. But you got to keep your sugar down. You know, Doc was so funny because I was, I was agitated. You know, I love my sweets. I want to buy. You know, I didn't have pie in months, man. You know, what the hell? Anyway, Doc was going, well, look, you know, he explained it all to me, and I understood it, but he said everything within reason, Herman. So he said, I'm going to let you have a little pineapple. So the next time they did my lab work, my sugar was through the roof. And immediately he said, get that cowboy in here, right? So I get in there, I go, am I in trouble? He goes, you're always in trouble. What the hell is that? You know, and I told him, I said, well, you said I could have a little pineapple. He rolls his eyes because he knows I'm playing him, right? And he goes, well, how much pineapple have you had? You know, one little slice, a couple pieces, two whole pineapples, you know, and it was, he busted me. Yeah, I was eating pineapple left and right. <laughs> And that's just one time. There's been so many now, it's so hard to keep track. Um, I actually yeah. have to write them down, man. Ah. But anyway, um, he was cool. He was cool. He wasn't too hard on me. And um, But now when I eat pineapple, every time I eat pineapple, I can see Doc. Not to give the guy the chills. But anyway, so we... Um, we don't put none of that in our juice. So, but anyway, you do have to watch your sugar. And, and the green drinks, I don't know what's the deal about um, me. I made them so strong because I was really sick. I really wanted to heal up. So I put collards, um, kale. If it was green, I took whole pieces of broccoli and juiced them. And you, you do the whole thing and you get like a teaspoon. <laughs> I paid $4 for that piece of broccoli. You know? So, but I drink them and it would beat up the cancer and I could feel myself getting better and better and better. So my recommend to you, if it's green, if it's on the list of the things you can eat, eat all you can. Because um, that is our medicine. You know, we're not lined up with a pile of pills every morning and a nurse shoving them down our throat. Um, we take supplements. And believe me, we take supplements. Because I went to the doctor and he goes, uh, he called me a liar. He said, you said you're not on any medication, but yet you bring in a big bag of pills. A big bag of pills, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, so... Um, he checked them all out. He said, well, I'll be doggone, man. He said, you're not on any medications. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, you're beating cancer, and you're not taking anything. So drink your green drinks, guys. They taste like dirt, though. They do. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Just keep saying, I'm going to get better. Ugh. <laughs> so, and um, this is actually two years. A couple thousand bucks. This is two years worth of vitamins. I saved every bottle. 
<laughs> you know, I know that's kind of crazy, but I'm kind of crazy, you know, because <laughs> I kind of knew. I kind of knew that I was going to survive, and I didn't know what I was going to do with the rest of my life. You know, here I was in the middle of becoming a comedian, and I get cancer, and I had to quit. And when I got cancer, I lost my farm, and thought I was going to lose my house. And a couple times, almost the wife. You know, so, I mean, it got hard. It got really hard. So, yeah, she kept me. Anyway, um, you're going to take supplements for the rest of your life. You know, and the more you get in tune with that, the longer you're going to live. You know, it's, it's really, 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 really important. Um, and now I've got something I want to show you. Uh, you know, some of us, we, we can't have red meat. And that's really hard on a cowboy because I raise cows to eat, and now I can't eat them. You know, so I walk by the grill, the neighbor's grill, he's out there grilling. I go, do you have to do that out there? <laughs> and he looks over at me like, oh, Herman, we've been neighbors for 10 years, I grill every Sunday, what's your problem? You know, you've been drinking, you know, and it's like, no, the smell's coming through the house, making me nuts, so I'd have to leave. And then they eat them in front of me, and it's like, oh. so anyway, it's wrong, man. So we, we trade out proteins, um, and we want to keep our animal protein to the very minimal. Um, we eat, uh, I, I was okay with eating chicken and a lot of fish, and I mean a lot of fish. The other day I found scales. <laughs> I think I ate too many. But, um, but one of my favorite, and I don't know if I can use this name brand, so I'm just going to kind of show the back of the box. But um, these are the best sardines I've ever eaten in my life. And everybody I turn on to these, they come back and they said, you know, I went down and got one of every kind. And I tried them all, and they were all horrible, except that brand you gave me. Because these got a little smoky flavor, no scales, no head, you know. Um, so uh, bees... I eat these a lot. I eat almost a pack a day, sometimes two packs a day to keep my proteins up. And it works great. And my lab work comes back fabulous when I eat this. So, um, but the bummer, there is a downside. When you eat these guys, your wife won't kiss you. It's <laughs> fact, tested it a lot. You know? <laughs> Even tried to be sneaky about it. Uh, she, I, I'd get just bending over and she'd go, up, oh, get away. You know, you've been eating them sardines again, ain't you? So anyway, yeah, and now the funny part about it, since I survived, she makes me eat a can every morning before I leave the house. You guys will get that later. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now we're going to move on to vegetables. Um, besides the ones you're getting in your green drinks and your juices, the juices are magnificent. You can take a big pile of vegetables, juice them all down, especially the carrot um, is a real important additive to put in your juices. Um, and you end up with that big giant pile in one glass. You can drink it right down, and you'll feel it absorb into your body. So, um, but you know you can't live on juice alone. So, uh, I wanted to ask her uh, about the difference between cooking them and um, raw, because you know raw is a big deal. It's uh, active. It's alive when you eat it. Um, it's really good for you, really, really, really good for you. And so I was asking, I said, look, I've tried to eat all the raw vegetables I can, but after a while, it gets hard. And she said, no, 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 it's okay to cook them. She said, they got good properties both ways, so it's all a, a good thing. The big thing is the oil. No corn oil, no soy oil, no, you know, there's, it's a big thing. So um, we stick mostly with um, avocado oil and a uh, really high quality of uh, virgin olive oil. And that way we're getting the right oils in our body. Um, me, myself, I'm a big fan of flaxseed oil. Uh, it's strong. Uh, not everybody can, can do it. Uh, but we're going to talk more about that in a minute. Um, I'm a little dry, so I'm going to grab my water. Oh, there's water right behind you. Oh, good, good. Oh, good. <clears throat> Somebody forgot the tequila. 
<laughs> I do miss that. I used to drink all the time when I'm doing... Because, you know, to me, comedy has got to be the best job on the planet. Because when I first did it and realized I could do it, and I'm up on stage and I'm looking at the pretty girls in the front row, all of them smiling and waving, and I'm drinking my drink, and I thought, this is the best job on the planet. You know, where are you going to get a job like this where you can drink on the job? <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me up now. So, so they did. And, um, all right, so you're going to cook your vegetables when you get tired of eating them raw. You're going to use good oils. Um, there's a million, and I do mean a million, uh, vegetarian, vegan recipes that taste just as good as if you're eating a steak. You just got to learn how to do them. You know, I'm, I'm still, you know, two years into the process and I'm still learning. And I've enjoyed a lot of new recipes and I went, wow, this is really good. I could eat this two, three times a week. So you'll find them. But it's, you got to do your trial and error. So um, now I want to talk about the doc, Dr. Garcia. You know, we all love him. And we all know that he is so strong in what he does. And um, some days he's going to make you scratch your head and go, ah. You know, me and him bumped heads many times. Uh, he's got a strong way of doing things. And what I, what I want to ask you is to give him the benefit of the doubt. Because he is, he's very well educated in what he does. And he won't tell you something if he don't believe in it a hundred percent. And if he is wrong and finds out he's wrong, he'll be the first one that stops everything comes and gets you physically and tells you, hey, look, I made a mistake about that, okay? Um, I'm going to tell a little quick story in here. It's kind of funny. Um, when we first started using the CBD oils, we had a beautiful girl sitting right here, and the doc was explaining everything to us, you know? And um, the young lady, she goes, well, I've, I've worked with these before, um, but she was a little shy because when she worked with them, they weren't legal, right? So she was a little shy about it, but she said, um, so how often do I put this up my anus? And the doc goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> he said, what is it with you people? He said, every time something comes out and says it's a cure, you stick it up your butt. <laughs> and I felt so bad for the girl because she just slid down in her seat and looked at everybody. And her face turned red, and she didn't say a damn thing, damn thing. <laughs> right? So then, a week later, Doc comes out here, and he gets everybody out here, including her, and he goes, I'm sorry. He said, um, everybody in here that's got cancer from here down, you need to put it up your anus, okay? So, and he was, he was so embarrassed. I mean, his face was blood red, and he was like, doing this, you know, it's like, ah, you know, because he hates being wrong, he really, really hates it, so, uh, and I look forward to it so much, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, um, a better soul you'll never find, and when he tells you he's always available for you, he has always been available for me, even after two years, if I was to ask you right now, Doc, can I see you? the next available moment he would make for me. So he's gotten me through every rough patch, not just one or two or three, but a handful, you know, a whole bunch. And I really believe in what he does and how he does it. So if ever he should rub you the wrong way and you need somebody to talk about it, I'll talk to you about it, okay? And maybe if you don't understand something he's saying, get with me and I'll help you understand what he's saying. Because he's on a higher level, guys. Or he wouldn't think the way he thinks and do what he's doing. This clinic wouldn't exist if he wasn't. So um, so let him help us do what we we're trying to do. Um, but then again, look at him like a coach. You know, any of you guys played baseball or football or any of the sports, you know, soccer, basketball, you always have that one hard-ass coach, but his team seemed to always win. So, and that's what he does here. He's a hard-ass coach, and I'll be the first to tell him that to his face. But we're a winning team, so and I'm living proof. 
So if you need any help with Doc, let me know. And you want to read the book. You got to read the book. So there's things in here that won't make sense to you until you get farther into the program or maybe a year down the road. And then they'll go, that's what he meant. And he got so upset when I didn't understand that, you know, but that's what he meant, you know. And for me, I've had several awakenings. Um, one of my favorite parts of the book, and I'm not going to tell you I know this book inside and out because I, there's still parts that I don't understand. Um, but I do understand chapter six, living in the moment. You have to live in the moment when you're sick and you're trying to heal your cancer. Every minute is precious. The reason Doc is the way he is, because I asked, my feelings were hurt. And I asked the head nurse here, I said, you know, Doc's real hard ass. I said, well, you know, I said, why is he like that? And she goes, Herman, you don't understand. You only have this much time. He's only got this much time to train you, teach you, turn you around, not to even mention your cancer. I mean, you know, so, so he ain't got much time, so he's trying to pack it all in at once. So that's why he comes off like that. You're going to be fine, though, and we're going to make sure of it. And they did. They did. And the more I learned of him, the more I uh, worked with him, the more I realized what, what she meant by that. And now I push that issue. We had, we've had a few people, and they're not here, but they were not getting it. They were just not getting it, even though... I did my best to explain it, the doc, Jake, Elizabeth, everybody tried, but this guy was already pretty much set on, I'm done. He already made all of his arrangements, all of his funeral, everything was done, all the money was divvied out to the kids, he was just at the end, he's at the end. And somebody was probably making him come here, right? Yeah. So as it turned out, he's not here. And when I say he's not here, I mean, he's not here, <laughs> you know? So, um, take it all with a grain of salt, you know, when you eat, I've had uh, some elderly women in here, they tell me, Herman, when I eat my green drink, I just stick it up there and I tell myself, it's still better than chemo. And they just shove it down the hatch, right, they, as quick as they can, and then they go, you know, <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch, you know. <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, any any questions you have about Doc, get with me. I'll help you. Um, now I'm going to move on to uh, to water, and I, you might not think that's a big deal, or you know you've got to stay hydrated, and especially if you're going to do the drips, um, anything with a needle, and you need to get all the water in you, you can. So if you can drink a little extra before you come in in the mornings, it really helps hydrate you not only. Um, for a hundred different reasons, but also it helps you to, to do your drip. Um, me and water, I never drank water. I used to make the joke all the time, you know what fish doing that? I'm not drinking that, you know? <laughs> but I drink a Pepsi or a Coke or a vodka and tonic or, you know, all that stuff. But um, now I drink all water, so cool. Uh, anyway, um, you gotta drink, if you weigh a hundred and 30 pounds, you got to drink 65 ounces. So you want to drink half of your body weight in ounces of water every day. Is it easy? No, you're going to feel like a fish. But you got you got to kind of do it, you know. Um, oh, yeah, and those uh, juices and green drinks. You know, I used to sit around with my friends, and we would smoke uh, Cuban cigars. And I know they're Cuban because they were rolled on the thighs of beautiful Latin women. That's a cigar joke, okay? Um, but anyway, um, we would smoke those cigars and we would drink a $100 bottle of rum, you know? And we did that for years. And then I got sick and my buddies didn't want to drink or smoke in front of me, so I kind of killed that deal. But then they seen me get well and they were getting older and sicker. And so they come back to me and they say, Herman, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about your lifestyle. And I was like, so you're going to poke fun at me? And he goes, no. Well, I want to, but I won't. But he said, no. He said, I want to be like you. I want to live long. So now, the same guys I used to hang with, smoking cigars and drinking, 
Now we sit around comparing juice. Yeah. <laughs> and because we're all big redneck boys, we're all like, how pathetic. Yeah, you know? but um, we're all going to live longer than the other rednecks. So we're all happy about that. Um, <laughs> all right, um, we went covered water. I'm going to cover uh, Budwig drink. Y'all familiar with it, right? Part of our protocol. Um, at first, you know, I did some oil painting. And every time I mix up my bud wig, I realize it smells like the oil paint. <laughs> and then I get up to my nose, and I go, wow. Yeah, I go, you got to eat it. You got to eat it, you know. So, and then I tried putting stuff in it, made it worse, you know. So finally I said, just do it, like the green drink. So, started eating them bud wigs. After a while, I got liking them. And then after a while, my body craved them. And I knew, I knew that they were a part of my, uh, my healing. So now I, I eat them faithfully, you know, because, you know, look at me. When I came in here, I was 112 pounds. I could barely walk. I'd sit in that chair right there and sleep for half the day. Wake up and go, my bottle's empty, I'm done, I go home. And they go, yeah, you can go home, you know, or you got to go see Jake or Elizabeth or Beth. Um, but yeah, I was in rough shape. And I think uh, the bud wigs will grow on you and you will realize. And I've actually had a reoccurrence of my cancer because I quit eating the bud wigs, even though I was still kind of craving them. And immediately when I went back on the bud wigs, the cancer immediately started healing. So if that don't tell you something right there. You know, and it really tuned me up. It tuned me up to the fact that you can't play with this diet. You got, you know, every all the survivors will tell you, you, you might not like it. You might want to be like normal or whatever, but this is your new normal. So you can say to heck with it and roll the dice, or you can take your new normal and make it work for you. And, and then you'll, you'll live a lot longer and be way more healthier. Um, yeah, I've covered some ground. I hope I haven't gone too quick and lost anybody, but um, eat your bud wigs because you may not know what they do for you. And, you know, I'm a science guy. I got to know. I want to know, you know, for my own, my own self thing. But um, they oxygenate you in a way that the same way with the water. That's why you got to drink so much water. You got to oxygenate your blood. And for cancer patients, a lot of cancer patients don't realize it, but their blood oxygen level is only 60%. The normal human being is 95 to 100. And that's, that's what helps the cancer grow and spread. So you got to oxygenate yourself if that's with good clean water, alkaline water, uh, lemon water, uh, bud wigs, and um, and plus, we do oxygen treatments here too. So where we use a hyperbaric chamber, which will squeeze you. <laughs> and I got in there the first time and I was like, wow, what's, what's this gonna do? And about five minutes later, I was going, oh, oh, my ear, oh. And then it let up. As soon as it got the pressure, it let up. And, um, and you feel good. You feel good because uh, the hyperbaric gets the oxygen in every cell in your body. It pushes the oxygen into the cell. And the cell's got to have that to clean, to clean itself. So, um, and now I'm going to hit on something. Uh, this is kind of a touchy subject, as is uh, everything to do with the back door department. Um, <laughs> I was a real shy guy when I got here. I'm not that shy anymore. So I know everybody's laughing. It's all right, you can laugh at me. But um, this is a oh, crappie enema you know bag. <laughs> Are you going to show us? Yeah, I'm going to show you. Well, no, I'm not going to show you. Wish. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is your friend twice a week, maybe more, depending on what they tell you. So I'm going to give you a, look, a couple pointers. Um, I learned from the best. Beth taught me all this. Um, this is always going to leak. Always. Okay, never trust that. Okay? <laughs> the ones of you that have made a mess understand. The ones of you that haven't will. So, um, 
and then um, you need a funnel for that. Don't try to pour that in there freehand or you're going to dump half your stuff all over the place. All right? And every drop is vital. In fact, after you get attuned to this, you will find yourself laying on your bathroom floor. Remember when gas was $4 a gallon and you pumped your gas and then at the end you lifted up the hose? Make sure you get every drop, you know? Going to get your money's worth? After a while, you'll find yourself lifting up the hose to get every drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And laughing about it. I used to poke fun at people in California about coffee animals. I'd get up on stage and I was like, those crazy Californians, man, they just, they're crazy. They'll do anything. I said, they're, they're putting coffee up their butt. <laughs> I said, why would they do that? I said, Chasing Sanborn and, and um, that other coffee guy, uh, they're, they're spinning in their grave right now if they knew what they were doing with that coffee. <laughs> anyway, um, and then here it is two and a half years later, I'm laying on my bathroom floor going, boy, karma's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I try not to pick on anybody anymore. Um, <laughs> well, all right, I'm going to pick on a little bit. They got a new craze in California now. Um, they're actually going to blood clinics and having chicken blood put into their veins, into their body. And I know that's grossing y'all out. It grossed me out. I said, who in the hell would put chicken blood in your body? So I was talking to a lady that just got back from California, and she told me she had that treatment. I said, well, why? Why would you do that? She said, because it makes the men more cocky and the women lay better. <laughs> I got you. I know. That's so exciting. Oh. Uh, so, and then there's one more segment, and then I'm gonna wrap it up. Yeah, I love it when they, I get that delayed reaction thing. Yeah, I love it. In fact, a lot of my humor, I would do it up in front of a crowd of a hundred people, and nobody would laugh, and I would like freak out. So then I grab my notebook. And I'd give them all a dirty look. I'd scratch that joke off, you know. I <laughs> worked on that joke for hours. You know? I'd throw that pad back down. And then a couple of days later, people would come up to me and they're shaking my hand and laughing. And they go, I got the joke. I got the joke. I was in the middle of the interstate. I got the joke. So it's kind of a delayed thing. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk about um, Beth, Beth's room there. I call it the Roto-Rooter room. You know, but they got a sign on the door that says colon therapy. <laughs> you know, when I first got here, I was real embarrassed. I said, I ain't doing that. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. So then um, the head nurse assured me, you know, and then I did a tour of it. And I went, well, it's really clean. I said, well, it'll smell not nasty. I said, well, we'll see. So I watched everybody as they came out, and they seemed to be okay. You know, I didn't see nobody come out crying. I wanted to, but I didn't do it in public. <laughs> but anyway, um, and I'll never forget the words that Beth said to me. Um, once I was on the table and she rolled me back over the way they, she does. She looked over at me and she goes, like that, she goes, breathe, Herman, breathe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was embarrassing, no, no doubt. You know. But um, now, now it's a piece of cake. And, you know, uh, and and my healing, I got to tell you guys, between the coffee, you got to you got to get it cleaned out. And if you're in the process of healing, what's going to happen is your lymph node system, you know, that same lymph node system that um, other medical facilities will say has to be cut out, right? Um, your lymph node system is the way you get rid of this disease. So. If you don't have colon therapy and do the coffee thing, your body's not expelling what it needs to expel. You got to get the cancer cells out. And to do that, and, and the extra plus here is when you do it, um, not only are you getting rid of the cancer, helping your body get rid of the cancer cells, but you're also getting rid of a lot of other stuff that your body's trying to protect you of all the time. So that when you do this, what happens now, your blood, white blood cells, all that, your immune system gets there, and there's nothing to beat up. 
because you done cleaned out the garage. It's, there's nothing there. So then it goes, hey, let's go knock the crap out of that cancer. Okay. And next thing you know, you'll feel, you'll feel your body getting stronger and healing. So um, I, I just want to let you know those are all important things. And, and that, that's a lot of what we do, or what they do here and, and let me be a part of. So um, when we turn off the camera, though, I will have a little answer, question and answer thing if, if there's anything you guys want to uh, ask. Okay? But thanks for having me. And we'll see Thank you again you. next time. Thanks, Bye-bye.